Your website doesn't show up on Google, not because of an algorithm update. Most likely it's because of really basic fundamentals that are just not done. So stick around while I go through six of the most common mistakes most people make with their website and how you can fix them straight away. Your website might look fine, but there's most likely a lot of bleeding and internal bleeding going on because you don't actually have the correct foundation in place for your website. So let's flow into how we can fix that today. Today I want to go through six of the most common SEO silent killers that you don't know about. Issue one, broken links. This might seem like, I think I know Aaron, my website has issues. It's actually not true. And the reason for that is that even large multinational Fortune 500 sites have broken links, right? And the way you actually find that is by using a platform called Screaming Frog. Now, for most of you who are watching this, you don't need to buy the paid version. Just download the legitimate version and it does an actual crawl of your website, like how Google crawls your website, and it's able to actually find any issue. Um, in the description below, I'll add a link on where you can go to get Screaming Frog. Meta titles and meta descriptions are really important for your website. Now, yes, there's going to be someone in the comments that says, oh, but Aaron, you know, they rewrite the title, so who cares? You still need to tell Google what is the basis of what that page is about. As the number one thing you have to do, the amount of websites I go to that still call their homepage, homepage, right? It just blows my mind. So the number one thing that you need to make sure you do is actually go in and make sure that you actually have titles on all your pages. Now, if you're using Shopify, which a majority of you are, you can do that and I'll show you another video up here on how to do basic SEO in Shopify. If you're on WordPress, uh, my advice to you is get a plugin called Rank Math. Again, uh, watch this video up here when I have that one done, which goes by step by step on how to actually implement Rank Math on your website. Now, the other thing you can do is if you're not sure what platform you have or if you've got it, I'm going to add an extension in the description below which is called Distetailed. It's a Chrome extension that I use and all my SEO team use. It's a fantastic tool for you to be able to see what each of your pages are without needing to understand how to look at page source or anything like that. It's literally like a one click button. So make sure you look at the description to below or watch the videos up here. Issue three is load time. And I think that sometimes people over exaggerate how important this is. I'm going to show you a completely different reason on why load time is so important and that is user outcome. So something that came out last year from Google was that they actually look at the user interaction on your website. So if someone has a positive outcome on your website, then Google knows that, hey, that website's actually positive because it actually gave someone the answer to their query. Now, the thing you've got to try and keep in mind is like, okay, Aaron, my load time's really shit, but my SEO team says it's not important or my agency said that it doesn't really impact it. No, it doesn't. But what it does impact is the user experience. And that's the thing you've got to remember. If you've got a slow website, people bounce. If you're unsure of how fast your website is, don't just go by I, you can't do it that way. In the description below, I'll have two links for two tools you can do. You have Pingdong, which is one which shows you just speed. Uh, and then you've got another one, which is called GT Metrics. Um, the good thing with both of these sites is they look at things a little bit different. Do not look at the Google web developer speed test that Google released. You're not gonna understand most of it. The reason that Pingdong I personally use is because remember, we're not looking at all those layer components of why your page is slow or why the website is slow we're actually looking at user experience so my advice to you is have a look at that i think it's going to be a really good tool it'll tell you how fast it is the rule of thumb is you want to be under three seconds really ideally what i suggest to everyone is one second i'll have another video up here around how to optimize your speed for different platforms mobile optimization is number four and the reason that mobile optimization is so important is because most people and most developers still build websites for desktop but you know as I've said before and I'll link some studies in the below it's like over 60% of users don't use desktop at all especially if you're dealing with younger generation they're 100% on mobile and as I guess an industry and as the world has changed we've kind of not updated those techniques we always design first in desktop and then mobile is an afterthought which is not correct so my suggestion to you is just yourself go to the mobile website on your phone and click click all the buttons and play around with it and actually do what you want the user to do. If you want them to fill in a 
contact form, if you want them to buy, you should be going through that process and seeing what it's like. My other suggestion to you is hiring a third party company to get third party people to actually test your platform, really important as well. Number five is a little bit more complex. It's around crawlability. Um, it's gonna be a really hard for me to explain in this exact video how you actually do that in an easy way. Um, I'm gonna link a robot text um, extension, Chrome extension that you can link below. What that will do is it will actually search your website and it will give you either a green for its indexable or a red for its non-indexed. I think that's probably the best way to look at this. Um, going into like robot text or your sitemap and trying to optimize that for most people who watch this video is not gonna be helpful. So I think the best course of action is actually use the extension if you've got an issue, then reach out to your web dev company you've got. Um, if you don't have a web dev company and you're hiring in and you've got an SEO company, first of all, you should buy the SEO company if your site is not indexed. And two, you should be then asking them to make those fixes for you. Um, I'll have another video over here on how to actually watch the step-by-step -step guide on how to use that extension. Six is a little bit more complex because it's around thin or duplicate content. Most people think that they don't actually have thin content. Their content's quite good. The definition of thin content also changes depending on who you talk to. My definition of thin content is when the content itself does not answer a question. I'll give you a really good example. If you are looking up how many calories are in an apple, right? You don't need a 2000 word essay on why apples have that many calories and how they calculated it. No one cares. All they want is that simple answer. Thin content is when you kind of just repeating the same stuff over and over and you're not actually adding any value to the end user. And I think as, as marketers and as business owners, what we should be focusing on more in today in 2025 and beyond is actually having good quality content that allows users to get answers and have a good user experience. And if you're not doing that, then your website's not gonna be giving people the answers, which in turn means that they're just gonna leave, which gives you a negative score with Google and ultimately it actually then impacts your rankings and ability to get more people. So they're my six most common things that I look at when I'm doing a site audit. No website is one ever finished and two, no website is perfect. So my suggestion to you is please look at these things, see if you can action them. If you can't, reach out to me. I'm always happy to have a look at a website and give you some feedback. Probably what I've taught here takes me five minutes when it might take you a couple of hours. Um, but my advice to you is always try and look at your website and think of it from a, your user, your person you're trying to sell to, the person you're trying to educate whatever it is and see if you're actually answering the question and giving someone the outcome thanks for watching this video it would be really helpful if you can subscribe and see more of my videos and of course if you can smash that like button it helps me a lot as a channel too thank you